Louisiana Beer Review's Orange Crush IPA from Back Bay Brewing Company, Virginia Beach, Virginia, certified independent craft brewer. This was sent to me by Douglas in Virginia. Thank you, Douglas. Uh, canned on June 30th, 2022. It's got the date, guys. Every company should put the date on the can. At least put a Best Buy date. Do I think that should be a law or regulation? No, I'm not saying that. I just think they ought to do it. Inspired by the legendary Virginia Beach Orange Crush cocktail, which I've never had. This beer was brewed with loads of sweet orange peel, creating a refreshing orange and vanilla bean aroma. They also add vanilla beans. Crush it on the beach, on a boat, or in your backyard. Wherever you are, be prepared to taste the most crushable IPA out there. Crushable meaning you could drink a lot of it, knock it back, you know. Uh, at 6.1, I guess crushable means more like you could, you could really drink it down. I don't know about not uh, drink a lot. That would be sessionable. Okay, I'll correct myself. All right. Um, find your refuge. 6.1, no, no IBU listed. Back Bay Brewing Company with a swan. This company was founded in 2011. And this is the first beer I've ever had from them. And this is the first video review for this product in the world. So a flavored ale. Common these days. Whether macro, middle, crow, or micro. It's uh, mostly cloudy right now. It's warming up. It's going to get up into the mid-80s, maybe high-80s, mid-80s. It's going to rain probably. Uh, we've been getting a lot of rain since July. Bone-colored head and a very cloudy, hazy, opaque, kind of orange, like a powdered orange appearance, some kind of thing like that. Like orangey. Orangey the cat. <laughs> yeah, smells like a typical um, hazy fruity, and this one has fruit, not just from the hops. Um, a lot of bready white bread, pale malt aromas, um, vanilla? No, and I wouldn't be mentioning vanilla if I didn't know it was in there. My friend David would say, look like cake batter. He, ha he hates these kind. I'm not in love with this style. I don't hate it as much as he does, though. I mean, he just, just gets angry about it almost, I think. When these first came out and got really popular around 2011 and it was like a big thing you know and um, it just slowly grew and grew and grew and it got so big now I noticed the last couple of years seem like it's been fading maybe like us too much of it and people got tired of it kind of like the seltzer market it just was flooded and I never had enough seltzers to gauge what was good or bad or mediocre really I've had enough of these though I get the impression, and I think Douglas said it in his write-up to me, that this is sort of like their flagship beer, the real popular one that they sell all around. And it might be their first beer ever. Um, but um, Crushable. Well, yeah, okay. Uh, that would could be said for a lot of beers, like, say, Miller Lite. <laughs> crushable, light lager, uh -huh. and sessionable. I try to avoid sessioning anything uh, aside from water because uh, I think it's a bad idea. Yet, like say, for instance, yesterday I was off of work. I took off. I went on a little road trip. All right, so it didn't take me too long to get back. I got back in the morning time. But um, so like I drank two pint cans of beer. 
strong lager. Okay. And then um, a 12 ounce light beer, Nickelodeon light. And then um, and Pabst Blue Ribbon. That was the whole day. days for it. and then a little bit of wine with lunch like you know really like that much now some people on their day off it's gonna get crazy you know to, but I just think it's bad idea now when I'm on a work day and I get off of work okay I'll drink two beers two two and um, I drink coffee you know in the morning I just think sometimes less is more and I'm not saying I drink a little bit 22 to 24 beers a week is not exactly uh, you know skimpy you say oh wait you did a taste challenges basically every day of the year or it adds up to that okay yeah true but you know this much of bourbon over here versus this much bourbon over here It's, I don't think that's excessive, you know, it's, if I poured them t both together, it would just be a regular serving once a day, I just, I don't know, I don't think it's too bad, but that's me, I could be wrong, later on I might find out that I was. This one has a medium body, the mouth feels kind of like, you know, cereal coagulated in the, in the milk type feeling, you know. Um, the <coughs> Excuse me, the finish is mostly dry. On the sweetness scale, I'm not tasting any van vanilla, I'll tell you right now. Maybe, maybe. But like I said, if I didn't know it was Ed, I'd never bring it up. Um, sweetness, you can see the clouds. So, um, or the effects of the clouds. Um, two out of five sugar cubes are not really that sweet. It's only two out of five. Bitterness units, eh, two and a half out of five hop cones. I would think that the IBUs on this probably 35, which is like not really an IPA, but everything has to be called an IPA for the last 15 years, so, or 12 years. It, it's more like a, to me, an orange peel, sweet orange peel flavored in vanilla, they say flavored pale ale. All right, pale ale. Not India Pale Ale from any understanding of India Pale Ale that I, I learned about. But um, that can be said for a lot of these. It just should be called Hazy Pale Ales. Strong Pale Ale, 6 over 6%. Okay. Score. Huh, it's nice. Scoring it in the style, even though I'm not in love with that style. In the style, it's well made. I can see why it's popular in that Virginia Beach area. It's a, a big let's go out, and hang out at the at the brew pub type of thing, uh, or pick a six pack up at the grocery store, man. Um, I'll go with 93 out of 100. 9.3 out of 10. A most excellent product from Back Bay Brewing. I'd like to try some more of their products. Uh, if they may show up in Louisiana, who knows? So thanks again, Doug. I appreciate it. And I'm going to end this review by saying y'all go to Virginia Beach, Virginia, and tour the Back Bay Brewing Company.